Welcome back to the Happy Camper, coming to you from the beautiful mountains of southwest Montana. Today we are back here at our sponsor's dealership, Rocky Mountain RV in Butte, Montana, and we're taking a look at a piece of their inventory that is uh, quite an interesting little floor plan in a uh, lightweight travel trailer. This is the 2575 Wilderness Travel Trailer, and this is a 2575 RKS, which will, of course, signify it is a rear kitchen slide-out. And uh, this little guy is is an interesting story. Uh, Wilderness is an iconic brand in the in the RV industry, uh, spanning all the way back into the uh, early 70s. And uh, at that time, Wilderness was owned. Uh, the the brand, the company, was a Fleetwood company. And uh, when Fleetwood ran into financial trouble in uh, 2008, 2009, and ended up uh, dismantling their towable division there is still a uh, motorized division of Fleetwood on the market the brand names went to went on the market for uh, for for Fleetwood's um, brands so Prowler uh, Terry was another big one and then of course Wilderness and those those brands were bought by Heartland RVs and uh, Heartland was a, a majorly expanding company at that time and uh, they needed some additional brand names and they so they put all of those iconic brands uh, back into production uh, throughout the different the different uh, product lines that they build. So this is the wilderness. So it's not an original wilderness, but in in my personal opinion, I think that this trailer is probably built better than the originals. Um, it, it has had a great, great track record since it's been on the market. It has become a West Coast production. Um, and, and when I say West Coast, that's kind of a rough term the the plant for this is actually in uh, the assembly plant is in Boise Idaho which is pretty interesting and and that portion of it for my particular part of the world is interesting in the fact that we have very little freight cost from Boise Idaho into southwest Montana and so so freight is just a simple parasite cost to a unit it doesn't doesn't gain the end user any particular usability if they build a unit in Indiana we have 1700 miles of freight um, you know and that can equate into a three thousand dollar bill when you're looking at a unit like this it's coming out of Boise Idaho in the uh, the Idaho assembly plant which is actually a beautiful plant I have toured that plant and met a lot of the people that work there and um, and do uh, build these units by hand each unit by hand here in the US of course and um, the, the interesting thing with that is uh, the the freight bill on this would be about a third or less than what you're seeing out of Indiana so you get the same trailer the same quality the same components built from Heartland this is Heartland's plant um, it's just simply less cost to the end user when you're in my part of the world. So that's that's an interesting story behind Wilderness. There's uh, a few features in here that I find to be uh, pretty intriguing. Uh, right here at the top of the video, I am going to go through the technical data on the unit just so we have that out of the way and I don't forget to uh, to give that information as I often do. So um, again, like I say, this is the Wilderness 2575RK uh, travel trailer. Heartland RV is the builder on it. It is 30 foot 9 inches overall tip to tail on this. Uh, and that's a pretty common length for this platform when you're running a super slide out with a sofa and a dinette. You know, you're kind of going to get into that 30 foot ish platform. The bunk models in these are going to be about a foot and a half, two feet longer. You know, so you kind of get all these trailers are going to be about the same with this big super slide out. Uh, dry weight on this unit is 5968, a hitch weight of 640 pounds, GVRW of 7400, a cargo capacity of 1400 pounds. Fresh water tank is going to be 45 gallons, gray water of 80 gallons, signifying we do have two gray tanks, uh, and then of course black water is going to be 40. Your water heater capacity in this is your standard 6 gallon gas electric uh, RV water heater, very common in the industry. So that's going to give you technical data. All that to say this is comfortably inside the tow rating for just about any half ton pickup on the market. I don't know of any half ton that wouldn't tow this comfortably. Uh, again, most of your Full-size SUVs are going to be in the same boat. Even some of your uh, mid-size SUVs would have tow rating to handle this unit. You do have to check, of course, your tow specs on your trailer and your uh, and your vehicle to make sure you're matching things up there. But let's take a walk through the unit. I'm going to show you all the features and kind of how the floor plan lays out. Uh, as usual, I'm going to start here at the entry door. That's kind of the most logical way. And I'm just going to go clockwise around the trailer. And that way we can kind of just see everything in a in a progression. So this is a rear entry coach. And, and most rear kitchens are. And so what you'll see is you come in the back 
uh, you know, kind of the back third or, or more of the trailer. Directly inside the door, you do have your gas electric refrigerator. This one happens to be a Dometic six cubic foot. Pretty standard uh, affair out here in these smaller lightweight trailers. Um, you, you know, time tested, proven, proven refrigerator. Gas electric, it's good for off grid use. You're, you're good for. Um, in any of the uh, the campgrounds as well if you're going to go in and plug in so you've got both options directly next to that we do have a suburban three burner gas range uh, with oven and this is going to be their standard 17 inch oven it does have the glass countertop cover and that does flush it down to the countertop nice and smoothly there standard uh, for mica countertop in this particular wilderness model up above that we have the hood range and we do have of course the microwave we do have overhead cabinetry. This is done in kind of a uh, darker cherry cabinet, I would call this. It's got a lot of contrast between your uh, your countertop there, your light countertop, and light flooring, and then a dark cabinet. So it gives it a very nice contrast inside the unit. We do have a fairly dark carpet in here as well. Um, we're also, of course, going to see undermount storage here underneath your... Uh, your range and this is just going to be a little flip down here this would be you know for kind of your heavier pots and pans that type of thing where you don't want to put them in a drawer and break the guides uh, that would be a good spot for that and then of course we do have a additional storage door there as well as the three storage drawers that come out and these are nice and deep um, and it does look like they use a, a finished um, more more like an MDF product here that they're using inside but it's a nice finished look inside the drawer and then of course that's on a full extension ball bearing roller guide coming out of the kitchen and into the slide out the slide out of course is the large slide comes down the uh, main uh, off door side of the unit and uh, the first thing we will see here is our sleeper hide-a-bed sofa. I'm going to fold this out for you because this is a unit that I feel like anybody that buys it is going to wonder, what are you looking at for extra sleeping? We don't have bunk beds here, so if I were to have company, how hard it is, is it to fold this bed out? The answer is extremely simple. Uh, keep in mind, I am filming with one hand and folding this bed out with the other, so bear with me. It's a little bit shaky while I do this, and it's a little bit awkward with one hand, but... Nonetheless, and there are two of those legs, I'm just going to do one for demonstration purposes here, but uh, with one hand, I don't know, maybe 10-15 seconds to lay that out into your full size bed. Now keep in mind, this is like four and a half, five inches of uh, cushion here, decent bed to sleep on. This particular one I would call like a double bed size, that kind of thing. You could sleep two adults here probably going to be a little snug but uh, it is much better than your standard jackknife sofa and then of course to fold that back in it's just everything in reverse and it is a very simple process and that is a better more comfortable sofa to sit on as well as a better bed to sleep on when you do have company <clears throat> We do have pleated blinds, and I was going to mention that while we were right here, throughout the Wilderness product. Uh, you will see a uh, metal Venetian in the kitchen, just so you don't, you know, get cooking debris on your fabric here. But that is uh, a fabric blind, pleated blind uh, from Heartland in this unit. Up over that, we do have three storage doors over the sofa. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we do have some nice LED lighting throughout the slide out. Over the dinette, we have extremely large picture windows. And of course, end windows in the slide out as well. Your dinette will make down into a bed as well. And that is one thing I just can't do with one hand. So I'm not gonna show you that process, but there is your, your little uh, rail that, that the table folds down, sets into. And then you just simply pull your back cushion out and bring it across to complete your bed. This is a small bed. This is going to be for kids mostly. You know, an adolescent, yeah, you could still do that. It, it will be workable. And, um, it, and you know, again, it's it's a workable system. That little, that little system has been on the market for the last 50 years in the RV industry. So nothing new there. Uh, pretty standard pretty standard equipment. The, the trifold hide-a-bed is something you don't see in every trailer, which is why I did want to show you kind of the operation on that and how easy it is to do it. As we step up into the bedroom, bedroom closes off from the main unit with a hard swing door. And again, a nice dark um, cat or wood color here to close that off against the lighter wallboard. A lot of nice contrast in this unit. I do like how Heartland uh, generally does their interiors. They do a nice job with them. 
up here in the bedroom, we have our RV queen. Now this is going to be a 60 by 75, um, so it is a little short. You can get fitted sheets for RV uh, queen beds, but you can also use just a standard home queen fitted sheet and tuck the bottom in a little bit further. If you are a taller person, I will say there's a fair amount of space here. So you could extend this bed platform out and put a standard home mattress in it if you wish to. A lot of the Wilderness products don't have this much room at the foot of the bed, so they do the shorter bed, um, trying to keep the overall length shorter in their units. Uh, so, But again, this particular model, you could extend the bed platform out, put the longer mattress in it if you're a taller person and you do require that. Uh, you'll also see, of course, we do have an, a second entry door here into the bedroom. A lot of people ask me why that, why certain models have that, why certain models don't, and that is just simply the fact that um, that is a, uh, uh, an egress. So it, it's a fire escape. When, when you're dealing with RV, uh, it's just like building a home or anything else. You have a code that you have to build by. So with a rear entry door, the, the exit door is far enough from the sleeping quarters that it is, uh, it's exceeding the code. So they add the, uh, the additional door into the bedroom here. And that's again why you're kind of going to see this, this wider walkway in this particular unit as well. Around the bed, you're going to see cabinets. Standard fair hanging cabinet on each side, uh, overhead storage doors. We do have a little nightstand on each side. They do have an outlet built into them. And they have a little cubby in there, which I kind of like. You can get your glasses and stuff down out of the way. Uh, and then, of course, the shelf up above. The bed, the foot of the bed does lift up here. And it'll give you some additional storage. And I haven't gotten this far yet, but this unit does come standard with a uh, central vacuum. And that little bag there, that little net bag, has all of the uh, hoses and, and attachments for the central vacuum system. So that's what you're looking at here. Your bedroom is wired for a, uh, a TV, and it does have the backer there in the wall, so you can always add one there if you wish to. Coming back up towards the door side wall, we're going to see the bathroom. And again, hard swing door. You're gonna to see towel hook mounted there on the uh, the back of the door, which is a nice little touch. Nice that you don't have to add every one of those little things in. Uh, this guy is uh, is running this, the uh, Thetford plastic foot flush toilet. If uh, the porcelain's a big thing to you, that is easily changeable to a porcelain if you wish to. Toilets are a couple hundred dollars. They change out with two bolts and a water line. It's very simple to change it if you wish to. Uh, that's kind of your standard toilet. It's fine, it, it'll work just fine. Uh, a lot of people make a big deal out of that porcelain and uh, if that's a big thing to you, then it's simple to change out. Your vanity has under storage here as well as a countertop up on top with a uh, standard acrylic sink Standard little white faucet, nothing too overly exciting there. You're going to see up above you do have a medicine cabinet with storage in behind that as well. We do have a Neo Angle corner glass shower with the full plastic surround. And of course soap shelves built in and that sort of thing. Over in this corner, I did like how they did this in this model. They put this little linen shelf in here and I really like that for extra towels and that sort of thing. It seems like you're just always looking for space like that in an RV to find spots to put that other stuff. So it's just another little spot in there that you can uh, you can add in. As we continue down the door side wall we're going to see a little uh, additional storage here. This is going to be a shelved pantry and these shelves are removable. Okay, and then up above we do have a hanging rod as well. So if you wanted to use this for an additional closet for coats or whatever, you can do that. You can pull out a couple of shelves and leave a couple in. You can pull them all out. It gives you just a lot of options on what to do. Below that we have another storage drawer. And then below that is the Intervac central vacuum system that we were just talking about with the, uh, the connections up there. And this is 12 volt, so that does work off your battery system. It's a nice little feature. Sometimes it's hard to find a vacuum that will fit um, in an RV. I, I've used a lot of the Dyson handhelds, and I really like that vacuum. I think it works well. But, uh, you know, right there at the end, of the, uh, the end of the day, you have it built into this unit. You don't need to look for additional, um, you know, a, a new vacuum when you're buying your unit and try to find a spot to put it. Next to that is going to be our TV location, and that's one of the interesting features about this particular trailer. So what you're going to see is down below we have some storage doors here, and these are just kind of a shallow door, and you'll see why here in just one second. Up above that, our TV is set up on a 
power mount. And that mount goes down into the countertop, and so it will hide the TV away for travel. And the cool thing about this is, now this unit was not optioned with a TV, but it's it's very simple to add it, and, and this model comes standard with the mount. So this little mount has a button right here that we push, and it will lower that mount down, and of course TV with it, down into the cabinet for storage and for travel. And also, if you're not using your TV, which a lot of people are not in Montana, um, that covers up and they have additional countertop space there, as well as, again, a nice big picture window on the door side of the trailer. Sometimes that's a hard thing to get, and, and a lot of times your campsite is over here, you want to be able to look out and see, you know, somebody's out around the fire or the kids are out playing you like to have that door side window. So that's a very nice feature of this particular trailer. Back here, just behind that, we do have additional storage as well. And then of course, again, we're right back here to the main entry door. The switches and control panel is kind of right here at the end of this cabinet. You're gonna have um, you know, your awning switches and your slide out switches and some lighting switches. So pretty standard stuff there. Um, it's, a nice, uh, it's a nice layout. It's a nice uh, well done trailer. Before I step outside, I do want to mention, of course, I'm right up here at Rocky Mountains parking lot. I'm up, up on the street. There, it's, of course, 5.30 in the evening, so there are lots and lots of cars going by. So it will be a little noisy. I have the big muff on the microphone. It should help with the noise out there, and uh, you should be able to hear me just fine. Uh, before I step out of the trailer and give you the outside surround on it, I'm going to give you my thoughts on the inside. There's a few things in here that, um, you know, Overall, I like the trailer. I like the way that it's done. I like the way that um, that Heartland made the contrast in the cabinets. Um, you know, it, I, I very much like the idea of having the TV be able to come down and out of the way and be able to use this for countertop space and have that outside window. I think those are very nice features in this particular unit. Uh, the things that I think could, could be upgraded, some negatives to the unit, the short bed. I, I have had a hundred people tell me, oh, you know, we just cannot deal with that short bed. I'm six foot three tall. I, my feet are hanging off the end. I hear that all the time. So that's why I mentioned to you, can extend that bed platform in there. Um, it, it is something you gotta do aftermarket. RV mattresses, quite honestly, if, if you buy a new RV, you're going to hate the mattress in it. Just go, go find yourself something you do like. And, and like I said, it's just a, a small piece of OSB and you can extend that. I know a lot of dealers will do that type of work. Um, I believe Rocky Mountain has done it on several models. It kind of depends on the trailer as far as being able to do it. So you have to look at it, talk with your dealership and make sure that that's something you can do if it's something you need. Again, if you're, if you're five foot six, you're going to be fine. You're not going to have any issues there, but uh, it's something I do hear a lot. Um, the plastic toilet's a small thing, and like I said, a lot of people make that into a big deal. I don't, again, find that to be a major issue. I can change that out easily, but again, it's something at this trim level. Should it go to a porcelain? Yeah, maybe it should. Um, you know, a few little things there, but easily changeable. If you like the floor plan, if you like the build, then I think that's where you're gonna see, um, you know, you can you can change a few things around, and uh, pricing on this unit is pretty attractive, too. You know, it's gonna, Give or take, it's gonna be out there in mid 20s, kind of the sale price on them. Uh, you know, they're gonna MSRP 35, 34, 35, somewhere in there. And, um, you know, so you're gonna have some room to work with this uh, as far as price point to get it to what you want it to be. Maybe upgrade the mattress, extend that platform, maybe put a porcelain toilet in. Do a few of those little things, you know, to customize your trailer to make it your own anyway. And, uh, you know, and have a very nice coach when you're done and still be at the same or less money than a lot of the ultralights on the market. One other thing I wanted to mention before I step out the door, and this is something that um, that most ultralights you will see do not have. Wilderness runs a full two inch side panel. So a door, an entry door on every trailer is the same depth. This is, they're built by basically one company. So if you see that this door frame here has a big indent into the wall. So if there's a big trim piece here that gets you in the wall, your wall is going to be narrower in most uh, in most ultralights, you're going to have either a one inch or a one and a half inch wall. This is a full two inch panel. And that's something that Wilderness does that I think is a huge deal is a full two inch panel. Again, being a Western built Northern unit, um, you're going to see it tailored a little bit more to our part of the world. So that's a big thing. When you walk into an ultralight, feel around the back of that door frame and just see where that wall sits. Uh, you'll find most ultralights on the market are going to have a big indent behind there. And that's going to tell you that wall is a whole lot thinner than what you are here. And again, of course, going to cut down on your, um, gonna cut down on your insulation. So as we step out the door here, what a windy, blustery day here in Montana. So I, I didn't run the awning all the way out. I did wanna show that it's a power and ran it part way out, but the wind's gusting enough 
that um, that I didn't want to have any issues with tearing it off while I was doing the video. So that's what you're going to see there. Is the awning is partially out, uh, gives you enough to see it. Uh, the exterior of the uh, the wilderness is is an attractive look. They have this two tone cap up here on the front and a, a gray sidewall. Uh, your front cap is painted on this, so it is going to be an automotive paint with a uh, kind of a charcoal gray with a very light silver in the inlay. We have some little uh, LED lights up here on the front. The front end is featured with a factory installed LCI power tongue jack. Directly behind that, two 20 pound LP tanks. And a lot of people ask me about that, you know, and they'll say, well, don't we have to upgrade those to 30 pound tanks? It just seems like 220s aren't going to go very far. Propane lasts a lot longer than you would think it will. If you're not running the furnace round the clock, uh, you know, if you're summer camping, it is really going to last a long time. If you're out, you know, hunting season early, early in the year where that, you know, you're seeing 40 degree highs for the day and down into the teens at night, then you may want to upgrade them. That's, that's a very user specific. Directly behind that, of course, the batteries mount here on the tongue. Rocky Mountain does install two batteries on a unit like this. Uh, they have not done that yet. They do it at PDI, their pre-delivery inspection, and they're going to, uh, going to put two of the uh, Group 24 Interstate batteries on there to finish out the unit. Uh, that is something you do get to check with your dealer and make sure that they're not going to charge you additional for a second battery or just not offer it at all. Uh, the front end of this, of course, does have the, the sacrificial black diamond plate down here. This is a rock art, so if you get a bunch of dings or dents, this can be replaced where up above it is fiberglass. So that is something to note there. We do have a hitch up light there on the front. The uh, front storage compartment is nice and wide. This side's gonna have a big door here on this side and the other side is a little smaller because they box that in for the water heater to set in underneath there. Um, but again, it's lighted on both sides, LED lighting, and your doors are gonna be the nice thick baggage doors with the metal slam baggage latches. So that's a nice feature as well. You'll also see that this is set up with uh, your standard crank down stabilizer jacks. I prefer a scissor stabilizer jack over a power because they're simple. They're easy to use. I put an adapter on my drill. It's just a three quarter inch socket or 19 millimeter out on the end. They make the little adapter for about eight bucks. You put it on there, you can run those down in about 15 seconds uh, for all four. So it really is a nice feature there. Uh, and again, when you're out in Montana's backcountry and you drag one of these, it's very cheap to change it out. You'll also see, of course, fully enclosed heated underbelly on the wilderness all the way through. Um, and that is a standard feature with this unit. This guy does have triple entry steps. They're both just the black steel. Uh, again, there's a lot of step talk on the market right now, but I think, you know, a standard three-step black entry step, steel step, nothing wrong with it. Uh, we are running wide track axles here. And these, of course, are gonna be 15 inch uh, radial tires mounted up on aluminum alloy wheels. And then the, the axles are set on this wide track setup. So that'll, that'll allow you to have more of the weight of the trailer carried on the chassis, less on the truck. It also adds some sway control. And that is a very, very uh, nice feature. When you tow this versus a standard trailer, especially on a, a blustery, windy day like today, you'll notice that this trailer tracks straighter behind the trailer because of that wide axle set. Like I said, this is the uh, power awning on this guy. It does have the light strip in the, the tube of the awning, and this is gonna be a little bit hard to see, but it's right up here in the tube and it runs the full length. And uh, that is actually a changeable color. They have uh, multiple colors. You can change that white, green, red, blue, all kinds of different colors on there. So that's uh, a nice feature as well. On the back, we have the uh, flip down storage rack. That's gonna be a 200 pound rating. So you, you know, you're good for generator, your cooler, uh, some extra firewood, whatever you might wanna take with you, you can set back there. The spare tire is mounted to that rear rack as well. Up here on the back of the unit, you're going to see a hot, cold outside shower, city water connection, and black tank flush all here on the back of the unit. Around the corners are 30 amp detachable power cord that comes down and off the unit to the side there. And I actually mentioned that that water heater is up in the front compartment. This particular unit does actually have the water heater at the back here. So I'm betting we have some plumbing running through there. I'll look at that closer when we get back up. Uh, the Wilderness uses the, uh, the full 40 inch extension. Uh, slide out system and this is the cable run slide out and uh, this system has been extremely extremely um, bulletproof we haven't had any any issues to speak of some slight adjustments that type of thing but just not many issues with that at all been very happy with the cable slide system that they're using and it does allow us to use a little bit lighter frame setup in this unit so we don't have to have it quite so heavy duty you'll also see a uh, sewer connection there down at the bottom with uh, the dump valves that go up inside your belly. So everything is heated. 
right here is our, is our fresh water connection uh, for our portable tank and that is what that's blocked off for in that storage compartment is so that water fill system can get down through there so my my apologies well uh, wilderness normally does put that water heater up in the front there but with this one being a rear kitchen they did decide to set it in the back one thing i did miss up here in the front frame well we do have the uh the fury on solar um charge port where you can set up your solar your portable solar panel and plug right in there and it is wired into the main battery system so that is the uh, wilderness 2575 rk uh, travel trailer from Heartland RVs. We're here at our sponsor's dealership, Rocky Mountain RV in beautiful Butte, Montana. I will link to this particular unit in our uh, description, so if you want to see it on Rocky's site and uh, and get a, uh, a good uh, overview of, of the whole unit pricing and that type of thing, I will have that on there. Their website, if this particular unit ha happens to be sold by the time you're looking, their website is rockymtnrv.com, and uh, you can look at any of the 200 RVs that they keep in stock any given day. We're the Happy Camper coming to you from beautiful southwest Montana. Have a great day and happy camping.